This is the ARC and R&D facility. Could you outline Ford's electrification strategy? Electrification is actually a wide, quite a wild uh, uh, area to cover. It actually starts from stop-start on the very, very extreme bottom end of um, micro-hybrids, so to say, uh, all the way via full hybrids like uh, you're used to see in the US and which are on the market there for quite a while, but going forward also towards full battery electric vehicles, um, uh, which are in the market uh, this year in the US already and coming to market in Europe uh, this year. So what, what are the Ford's uh, electric vehicles over the next five to ten years? So the ones which we have announced and which are in the pipeline in terms of the full battery electric vehicle to, uh, to start at that end of the scale, it's actually the Transit Connect, which is already in the market in the US and coming to market this summer here. And then uh, this year in the US and next year in Europe, it's actually the Focus battery electric vehicle coming out as well. But then if you go to the other forms of electrification, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, there are products in 2012 and 2013 also coming to the European market. We are already in mass production in the US for quite a while since 2004 in that segment. So we have about 160,000 vehicles on the road already in that segment. Um, and hybrids obviously a big part of uh, Ford's strategy. Yes. Um, and plug-in hybrids, uh, what models of plug-in hybrid have you got? now and coming out in the future? Right now in terms of plug-in hybrids we have um, Escape in the US as tryout um, real-world experience fleets so they are not yet available for final sale to the customer but uh, based on the C-Max actually the plug-in hybrid will be coming in the near future so available in Europe in 2013. And how committed is Ford to pure electric power? Pure electric, we are committed to actually have them in a portfolio. We see that with the cars which we already have lined up for, for sale. Um, it is, however, not necessarily the universal answer for every customer and every application because uh, it has certain areas of advantages, but it has also drawbacks in terms of range, in terms of cost. So, um, in term, put, putting a bit of a scale uh, to it, while we are seeing about 10 to 25 percent electrified, heavily electrified vehicles by 2020. Um, only a small portion of that will be full battery electric vehicles. Um, of which the Ford Focus electric is one. Uh, what can you tell us about that? That one is actually it's a full production vehicle available to the end customer as of next year in Europe. Um, so it will have a range of about 160 60 kilometers in terms of certified NEDC range. Um, has a 23 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, um, so the full, full state of the art battery electric vehicle in the compact uh, vehicle class. And it is, uh, I mean, there's, that's one model. Um, are pure electrics seen as a bit of a diversion from the hybrids and the plug in hybrids, or um, uh, is it a genuine uh, route that Ford wants to take? I wouldn't say it as a diversion. It is. Um, I think the, the days of one size fits all are probably over in terms of passenger cars in general. So there are certain segments, certain areas where battery electric vehicles make absolute sense and there are other customers who have the better deal with going for conventional hybrids and plug-in hybrids. And what would you say is the biggest barrier to the mass take-up of pure electrics? Biggest barrier in terms of cost uh, is the cost of the battery pack. Um, so to really have a cost-effective range but also some of the utilization aspects are the barrier for sort of making it right for everyone, like range, so even if the cost of the battery would be low, the packaging space and therefore the range of the battery uh, is another inhibitor to make it a sort of the universal answer for everybody. And um, do you see there being many advances in battery technology, for example, that may change the game and change Ford's outlook over the next few years? There's clearly significant advancements going on on the battery technology. The costs are coming down, the technology is progressing, but I wouldn't say in terms of a breakthrough order of magnitude kind of improvement, more in terms of um, sort of a evolutionary improvement. So a, a revolutionary change in terms of the assessment and the strategy I don't think will be in the, in the next few years. And uh, what about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, uh, which are technically, I know you classify them as sort of electric vehicles, so how, how do you, what, what are that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, vehicles are coming out forward? In terms of vehicles coming out, uh, we have made no commitments whatsoever. In terms of experience with the technology and vehicles, we actually are participating for a number of years in, with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in public tryouts. We have two million kilometers of real world experience under our belt. 
So the technology is something we have on the radar. The vehicle side technology, other than the fuel cell, is effectively the same as for battery electric vehicles. So that learning is all sort of completely synergistic. The fuel cell it's, itself, we are putting a lot of effort into the research of the fuel cell stack. In terms of actual market introduction, it's uh, quite a bit of a story um, and, and dependent on whether, where are the government really well in terms of making a hydrogen infrastructure a reality, in which case the technology could uh, catch up fairly quickly. And is it an ultimate goal? Do you see it as a sort of uh, light at the end of the tunnel for sustainable motoring? It, to some extent, um, hydrogen is fairly similar to the, uh, the, the battery electric story because hydrogen isn't the primary energy source. So you have to generate the hydrogen from somewhere. And um, the same way you need, it only works if you have renewable sources for electric energy. Only if you have re renewable sources to generate the hydrogen, uh, it actually makes sense. So I, I wouldn't say it's the, the automatic panacea because it depends on, on your energy infrastructure and the whole infrastructure of uh, providing the hydrogen.